All right, guys. Uh, welcome back to my NFL week uh, weekly predictions. We're on week six now, and the league is all over the place. It's really hard to tell. It's still like usually by now you usually start to see who's legit and who's not. And to be fair, there are legit teams on uh, you know out there, but it's getting harder and harder to tell who's else is going to make it outside of like three, four teams at best of who's real, like, who's legit, and who isn't. Um, so, let's start this with a rousing game tonight, in that we have the Washington Commanders take on the Chicago Bears. God, it's a fuck. It, like, I feel bad for Al Michaels. You left, you, you left fucking Sunday Night Football for this, and Jeff Bezos is like, I am paying for literally shit-tier games back-to-back. This is this is a coin toss, really, because both teams are just not good. Um, Carson Wentz, you never. I think Carson Wentz is out the door at this point. Ron Rivera, this might be his last game before he gets fired. It's a shit show. This is gonna be a shit show of a game. I'm gonna give this slightly to the Bears because I think Justin Fields is starting to like show flashes here, here and there. He just needs better weapons, man. I feel like at least like when Jalen hurts. When Jalen Hurts was struggling, they got him A.J. Brown, they got him some new wide receivers, and now he's thriving. I wish Chicago would do the same for Justin Fields. So, But I'm giving slightly them because commanders are just god-awful. They're just god-awful. Um, yeah, so let's move on now to uh, the Ravens and the Giants. A game I thought would be a clean sleep, a queen, clean sweep, bleh a clean sweep for the Ravens, but the Giants recently have shown that these guys have grit, these guys have tenacity, and despite being injured, they exposed the Green Bay Packers like I exactly told everyone. I knew, uh, that's why I picked the Giants, because, yeah, I knew that after that Patriots game, the, the Packers clearly don't know what the fuck they are doing, and I knew the Giants, despite the injuries, were going to get it done, because they knew how to, I feel like they knew how to adjust and yeah, Saquon Barkley was hurt. He, he they have Brian Dable is turning this place around. But this is a, a so this is a nice David and Goliath matchup and a real litmus test for not just the Giants to show just how tenacious they can be, but also the Ravens because now you've blown two games. It's very much like the Packers where when they get punched in the mouth, they don't know how to adjust and change the gameplay. And yeah, this might be um this might be interesting. I am going, to, uh, despite I think the Giants could take this, I'm going to tentatively give this to the Ravens. I feel like this game is going, but I do see this. This could be a, a this could turn into a firefight, depending uh, depending on what version of the Ravens show up. But I'm going to give this slightly to the Ravens on the grounds of this is going to be a put up or shut up moment because the NFC North is just a mess right now but this is their time to like really kind of get ahead but the Giants could you know legit say no we're, we're we got shit to prove too so I'm gonna give it slightly to the Ravens but this could easily fall in the Giants favor anyway moving on now to the Jaguars and Colts an AFC South divisional game which I yep Speaking as a fan of someone from the uh, the Titans who are AFC South, this is another garbage division. Yeah, this this team this is not a good team. This these are not good teams. Um, the Colts. I don't know how they beat the Chiefs. I really do not know how the hell they beat the Chiefs. I'm gonna give it slightly to the Jaguars, but yeah, just slightly because. I feel like they're they're a little more healthier and they don't have Matt Ryan as their Q, as their QB. I had such high hopes for Matt Ryan, even if he went to the Colts. I was like, I just don't, I don't trust it. Anyway, next up is the Patriots and the Browns. Patriots, welcome to, you know, a easy schedule. You're literally getting an easy schedule. The Browns defense and they have Nick Chubb, and the only thing, the only problem is they have Jacoby Brissett as their QB. And that's really it. That's the thing that shoots him in the foot. Bailey Zappi, I can't believe that's his fucking name, um, is a decent quarterback, but he doesn't impress me at all. I think it's more that they're depending on the run game. 
I'm going to give this slightly to the Browns on the grounds of that defense can give fits, and I've seen the Patriots have no run game. They have no run block game. So when Nick Chubb gets going, he is going to shove his Chubb down their throats. I immediately regret that joke. I apologize. Anyway, moving on now to the Bengals and the Saints. Bengals are looking kind of tough. Are looking... Are they uh, Here's the problem that the Bengals have, and they've had it since the Super Bowl, where they can't seem to finish off an opponent. It's the same thing the Titans do, which bothers me. Um, the Bengals have this problem where they just can't finish off an opponent. The Saints, their offense is struggling, but that defense is dangerous. That defense is straight-up dangerous, and it can definitely give some fits. Um... I'm going to give this one to the Saints on that defense is just going to give Burrow fits constantly. But do I see this to be a... It's going to be a good game, don't get me wrong. It's going to be a really strong game. But I am going to give this to the Saints on the fact of that when that defense, when that Saints defense gets going, they get going. And they can give anyone fits. Speaking of fits, let's talk about cry, the Crybaby Buccaneers and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Steelers, you are bottom of the division and even though Kenny Pickett looks legit, like he does look really good, you have the highest paid defense, and I don't know how that is because it's so garbage. You really, literally can't pay, f without TJ Watt, you're nothing. You are nothing without TJ Watt. And the Buccaneers are just mediocrity. You have literally another, you are just another, I'm giving this to the Buccaneers, not that I want to, but yeah, the Buccaneers get to, uh, get to coast for a solid another two weeks because after this they get they get the uh, Panthers and we'll talk about them in a moment um, and they get this game yeah Buccaneers you you were literally giving them like a paper thin schedule to, to stat bad for Tom Brady that congratulations Steelers Where's the Steelers? anyway uh, Falcon next up is our Fal is the Falcons and 49ers 49ers have suffered some critical injuries, but they do have some legit talent still behind it. They are still going strong. Falcons, on the other hand, Falcons, while they do look like they're tanking, they still show a lot of tenacity, and they do show a lot of grit um, for a lot of their games. They do show a lot of uh, just ferocity. But I'm going to give this slightly to the 49ers. Despite being injured, they still have a lot of great talent. Um, but the Falcons are definitely going to make this a game, and I can't believe I'm saying that about the Falcons. Next up is the New York Jets taking on the Green Bay Packers. Packers got punched in the mouth by the New York Giants the other week. The other week. And yeah, you guys got exposed on live television in another country. It was, yeah... I don't know what it is, but when the Packers get punched in the mouth, it's the same thing with the Ravens. When they get punched in the mouth, they don't know what the hell to do after that. And Aaron, I don't. I think Aaron Rodgers should stop doing play calling. He's he's going diva mode. New York Giant, the New York Jets. However, you guys have been like surprising everybody. Like you're the little engine. I don't know if this can get you to like a playoff spot, but like you're the little engine that could. However, I'm going to give this to the Packers because I don't trust the Jets enough to get the job done. But then again, every time I've picked against the Jets, they've somehow, like, two out of three times have won. So this could be, if if the Packers lose to the Jets, it's panic time, because after this, it's the Commanders, and then it's the Buffalo Bills at their stadium. And it's gonna be cold, I assure you. Because they are, uh, like, the Bills are gonna look to make a statement out of you, Packers. So you, you kind of need to get your shit together against b uh, two opponents that you should be dominating, but I don't have any fucking faith in you. I only have just a tiny bit because I just can't think, I can't see the Jets getting it done. I, just, I would give it to the Jets, but I just can't see them getting it done against you. But we'll see. Stranger things have happened this season. Um, next up, we have the Vikings and the Dolphins. Um, Dolphins are on their third string quarterback, and they're missing their vital corners. Uh, Vikings, I don't know how the hell they are the top of this division, but it's also 1 p.m., and it's not primetime Kirk Cousins you're dealing with. I'm going to give this one to the Vikings on the grounds of their... their they get good... Like, they are a... 
very talented team, and I think the t the Vikings that are going to show up are the Vikings that want to keep the head of the division away from the Packers. Anyway, so there you go. Um, there you go, guys. Uh, Vikings. Next up, we have the Carolina Panthers and the LA Rams. This game is go this going to be garbage. This is going to be a garbage. And I thought, like, okay, the Rams could easily crush them. And I'm still giving it to the Rams, but they have clearly shown that this is not, this is what you pay for when you when you sign up so much high end talent and put so much stock in the in you know in your you know fuck them draft picks and all that. When yeah, it clearly comes back to haunt you. The succubus came to collect her your prize, you know, to collect this, your soul. Panthers are in the are now going to go full blown rebuild rebuild, and I think they're just going to tank and just sell off pieces. There is a lot of talk of Christian McCaffrey going to the Buffalo Bills, which I think would be if he provided he stays healthy, that would literally just annihilate everyone in their path. But yeah, I'm gonna give this one to the to uh, I'm gonna give this one to the Rams slightly, but yeah, they are not the same LA Rams we saw in the Super Bowl. Next up, we have the Cardinals and the Seahawks. Cardinals are inconsistent as hell, and Cliff Kingsbury literally shoots this team, in the, it's his own team in the foot, consistently. Seahawks, I don't know what the hell to think of you, because you have a really good defense, and Geno Smith is either really good or really bad. I can't tell yet. Um, I'm going to give this one to the Seahawks, because, I, again, that defense can give fits when it's healthy. And, yeah, when Geno Smith, when, if, if you get, like, God mode, like God mode Geno Smith, it's going to be interesting to say the least. Seahawks Nation, let's fly. Does that bite Cal uh, Colorado? I feel like it does. Anyway, next up we got what could be the, the next AFC Championship game. These two are definitely going to probably meet in the playoffs again. We got the Buffalo Bills taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. This is going to be a fucking game, ladies and gentlemen. Um, this is to. De I feel like this is one of those games where it's going to determine w seeding for the playoffs in the future. This is going to be fascinating because both teams are like Patrick Mahomes is playing his ass off. Remember, we all thought the AFC West was going to be like a dogfight. Nope, clearly not. <laughs> And the Buffalo Bills are one of the most dominant teams, if, like, despite the one loss they had to the Dolphins, the most dominant team, one of the most dominant teams in here. Both of these teams are definitely playoff bound. Um, Buffalo is, I'm going to give this slightly to Buffalo because they are going to get some pieces back, and, but this could use, this is a coin toss as to who could win. Like, this is literally like, who the hell knows? I'm giving it slightly to the Bills, but you are an arrowhead, and Patrick Mahomes is healthy. And so is Travis Kelsey. You're going to have a dogfight on your hands. So next up is a very, in, uh, like, I never thought I'd say this, but it's going to be a very entertaining um, Sunday night game of the Cowboys taking on the Eagles, the classic rivalry. You know, there have been great wars, uh, like, great rivalries throughout history. Rome and Carthage, uh... <laughs> the uh, the Greeks and the and the Persians, Cowboys fans, Eagles fans. <laughs> Literally, you put an Eagles fan and a Cowboys fan in a room and give them a knife. They're both gonna try to kill each other. Cow uh, Eagles are the last undefeated team in the NFL, and Cowboys are in rush we trust because you've clearly to thrown Dak aside already. Um, this is gonna be interesting. I feel like what does more of the work is Dallas's defense. Like that seems to be the constant is that Dallas's defense does m the vast majority of the work for them, and Cooper Rush feels more time management than anything else. I'm gonna give this to the Eagles, however. This is gonna be in their home, and that stadium is gonna be rocking. And furthermore, when that defense is healthy, it's gonna be good. And also. Yeah, Jalen Hurts is clearly showing that once you gave him weapons, that's the reason why you drafted him. But this is going to be... I think this is going to be a dogfight. This is for all the money for who gets to be top dog in the NFC East, which three of those four teams are clearly, like, warring it out. <laughs> when three years ago, it was the NFC least. <laughs> 
And finally, for our Monday night game, another fucking Broncos primetime game. Ugh! No more. No more. No more Broncos primetime games. Yeah, Broncos nation, let's die, apparently. Um, Chargers, also, you guys are... Uh, same thing with the Cardinals, where you guys have a coach that shoots you in the foot every time, despite all the talent you have. I'm going to give this one to the Chargers, though, because, A, they're going to use a lot more of Austin Eckler. Justin Herbert is clearly the guy to depend on in crisis situations. And Broncos, you're... I hope you enjoy the next three years without a draft pick, without a first-round draft pick. Anyway. So, yeah. There you go, guys. Those... I fully acknowledge, as always, that these could be wrong, but you guys tell me in the comments below what you guys think of this. Comment below, let me know. Other than that, I'm Mr. Multiverse. I'll see you next time in the Multiverse.